What's up guys, Mark Green here from DiabetesDietGuide.com and today we are talking about how to stick to New Year's resolutions. Yes, that's right, with the new year upon us, I thought I'd do a video about how we can stick with those good intentions that we all have at the beginning of the year, but tend to fall by the wayside by the beginning of February. So what is it about people that can stick with their New Year's resolutions and make changes for the better? So in this video, we're gonna look at 10 reasons why that is, and actually just explain a little bit more about the psychology and the steps that you can take in order to stick with the changes that you intend to make. Number one, define it and be specific. Now, as I blog on fitness, lifestyle, and healthy living, I think a good example to use is weight loss. Now, the number of people, friends, family, uh, patients that I see that say that their New Year's resolution is to lose weight. Now, obviously, that's quite a broad sweeping statement. It's not very specific and it's not very defined. So the first thing you need to do, regardless of what your New Year's resolution is, is to make sure that you are very specific and clear on what you're setting out to do. So if it is weight loss, how much weight are you looking to lose? What's your end point? And then from there, how are you gonna go about sustaining that weight? Which ties us in with number two. Say exactly what you're going to do. So after you've defined it and you're specific, then we want to start thinking about actually those daily behaviors that are going to tie into achieving your goal. So exactly what are you going to do? Sure, you're gonna lose weight and you might say, I'm gonna eat a little bit healthier and I'm gonna get active. But again, these are very broad statements. What exactly are you gonna do each day? Are you gonna plan your meals? And if so, what type of meals are you gonna plan? What books or recipes are you gonna follow? How many workouts are you gonna do a week? How are you gonna plan those workouts? Are you gonna get a trainer? Or are you gonna to go to the gym and sort of freelance it yourself? If so, what's that training plan look like? How much cardio? How long are you gonna be there for? What weightlifting are you going to do? Or maybe it's a sport or whatever it might be. Really get specific and define what you're gonna do so you can almost create daily checklists that you can then start to tick off as you're going about your new behaviors, which then feeds into the overall goal. So almost the overall goal is kind of a byproduct of those specific behaviors that you're doing. Number three, track it regularly. Now we're probably all guilty of this where we start something new, but then we don't really check in to see how we're getting on. Now weight loss, you can track it quite easily because you can jump on the scales and see exactly where you're at. But other things like taking up new habits or learning a language, we're not so good at actually tracking. So actually, how are you gonna measure your progress? Because when we start to create that progress in our minds or actually see progress, it encourages you to continue. And one thing that I find particularly useful is actually creating streaks. So I'll buy a calendar and actually cross off all the days that I consistently do a behavior. And a good example of this is actually, I use language as an example, I'm actually trying to learn Spanish, although I can't speak very much despite being at it for a couple of years now. But nonetheless, uh, each week on a Tuesday at 5 p.m. I have my Spanish lesson and some weeks I cannot be bothered, I do not want to do it, I've had a long day at work um, and Spanish is the last thing that I want to do. But then on my emails pops up, you're on a 19 week streak. And I think, oh, won't that be great to keep it going? So then I do the lesson and suddenly it's a 20 week streak. So those types of things actually psychologically help you stay on track and keep going. So you need to almost create these little streaks or wins within your own bubble to help motivate you to keep going. Number four, Remember your why. Now in the last point, we talked a little bit about motivation, but this is really important. So why are you actually making this change? Now sometimes it's because we feel like we should. Now if that's why you're making a change, chances are you're not gonna stick with it because you don't really want it. So if you don't really want it yet, perhaps research it a bit more and actually find all the reasons that you should be making a change and maybe your motivation might be get a bit better and actually increase the chances that you'll stick with the behavior. Now, if you're absolutely nailed on that you're gonna do it and you're really motivated and you want to carry on and do this thing, then just remember, you need to re-engage with that motivation regularly. Because the problem with motivation is, it's great at first, but a week or two down the line, it completely leaves you. So you almost need to train it like a muscle. You need reminders as to why you're doing it, what's the end point, why are you trying to achieve it? And you need to check in with those reasons regularly to reinvigorate that motivation. Because if you don't, I can absolutely assure you that motivation will go and you'll start to miss a few things and before you know it, you're back to square one. Number five, make it appealing and easy. So one of my catchphrases is, let's try and follow the path of least resistance because if you do that, you've got more chance of doing it. If you're meeting resistance and you're making life hard for yourself, you're not gonna do it. 
So let's say you're trying to make um, uh, dietary changes and you're trying to eat a bit healthier. If you're having to come in and cook a meal from scratch every evening after work, chances are you're not gonna stick with it because it's hard. Whereas if you go out of your way one day of the week and bulk cook up some healthy meals and then you've got some in the fridge that you can reheat, you just increase your chances of success because those days that you don't want to do that and cook, you can just pop the healthy meal you've already prepared in the microwave and it's ready for you. So you've just increased your chances of sticking with it. Another one would be, say, if you are um, trying to get fit and healthy and you want to work out. Now, if you've got a room that you've dedicated for the workouts, but it's covered in junk, then every time you, have, you go to work out, you have to clear the room. It's already become a bigger task than what um, it should be. So you're less likely to do it. So designate a space for the workout that you keep clear and therefore you have made it easier to go about it. Then the other thing that you need to do is think about um, just starting, chunking the task into smaller segments because we're all guilty of this. I'll think of a workout that I wanna do and I'll write it out and suddenly it's an hour of slog. And I don't really feel like doing it and I might not even do the workout at all. Whereas if I just started or just got out the door for a run, for example, if I just got out the door and started, chances are I'd go further than what my initial motivation would have taken me. So if we start breaking up those big tasks into smaller segments, just start, just get out the door, just put some food in the frying pan, chances are you go a little bit further than what you intended. And actually, again, it increases your chances of sticking with the long-term behavior. Number six, remove barriers. So I alluded to this in the last point, where we say keep a clear room if you're gonna work out, so you're not having to remove loads of junk from the room in order to actually get going. That's a barrier. Another barrier is, is if you're trying to eat healthier. If you've got a bunch of chocolate or alcohol in the fridge or in the cupboards, there's a strong possibility that you might actually indulge in that stuff because it's easy. And when you're sat on the couch and you're bored, um, or it's dark and it's cold as it is in the UK at this time of year, then you are increasing your chances of lapsing. If, and it's an old cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. Don't have it in the house and you're less likely to do it. You have to physically go out of the house to then get these foods or drinks in order to then slip. So it's a conscious decision then. And you might actually change your mind by the time you get there, or if you have gone there and actually slipped, fair enough, you know what you're doing then because you've had a lot of time to think about it. So try and remove those barriers. Um, if you're trying to be more organized or you're trying to do better at work, keep a designated area for work that you don't mix with your leisure time. So don't be sat on the laptop in the lounge. Put the laptop in a, on a desk in a designated room that you keep uh, nice and organized and clear of junk because it's just, it just promotes a healthy and um, stress-free work environment. You're much more likely to do the work there um, away from distractions than you would be on the couch where the TV is and people are in, or out, in and out from the family distracting you. Number seven, get a buddy to do it with. Now perhaps you're thinking you don't have anyone to do this with, but hold that thought because you don't necessarily need to get a buddy that is looking to achieve the same goal as you. There is no reason that someone might have a completely different motivation, but actually you just use each other to see where you're at and stay on track. So you might be trying to lose weight, whereas your friend might be trying to learn the language. So why not actually just buddy up and check in with each other once a week and then you become accountable to each other. You're much more likely to stay on track if you have someone to do it with, even though your goals are separate, than if you just try and go it alone and you've got none of that support. Number eight, make it fun, challenge yourself. So chances are, if you're trying to make a change that you've got no interest in and actually you don't really want to do, then you're probably not going to do it. Um, and that begs the question, why are you making this your resolution in the first place? So chances are it's actually something that you want to do. So what ways can you make it more fun and more entertaining? Perhaps you could make little challenges for yourself within the context of the New Year's resolution. So if you're trying to go running, for example, don't just go out for runs, pick a distance and see what sort of time you're making or download an app like Strava which tracks how far you've run and actually will record your monthly totals for your distance that you do. So then you can start trying to beat your monthly totals for the distance or your PBs for, um, or your personal best if you don't know what PB is, for your times over specific distances. So you're starting to put mini challenges within it. And in fact, apps like Strava, uh, by the way, I've got no uh, stake in the Strava, it's just the one that's popping to mind, has leaderboards and tables that you can actually challenge other people with um, or try and um, run particular routes that that then puts you on the leaderboard. So you're almost creating those little challenges and games within the context of your goal. So if you can make it more fun, 
and more challenging, again, you're more likely to stick with it. Number nine, add rewards. So we don't wanna be all work and no play. So if you are going to try and do something, then make sure there is a reward at the end of it. For example, sometimes making a video like this one is a bit of a slog. You know, uh, before filming this, I was downstairs on New Year's Eve watching a movie and it's about five o'clock in the evening, it's dark outside. The last thing I wanted to do was get up and come up here and start filming. But I've agreed with myself that when I'm finished, I'll go downstairs, have some family time, play with my son, and actually that's my reward afterwards. So just by building in those rewards or those relaxed days or uh, whatever it might be can help then motivate you to get through the bit you don't want to do necessarily to then get the enjoyment out of it. And looking at fitness and lifestyle, a good example of this would be if you're good Monday to Friday, then you have your blowout on the Friday evening or the Saturday evening. So you have something to look forward to for the, for the week. So it's not just a completely um, boring existence where you don't have any slips in your diet whatsoever, because at the end of the day, if that's how you're living, it can get a bit monotonous and not very enjoyable. And again, increases the chance of slipping. So make sure there is some fun built into it. And number 10, remember emotions drive habits. So we've kind of touched on this theme throughout the course of the video, but remember, we don't really act as human beings until the emotional drive kicks in. So we might say, oh yeah, I need to go to the shop, but until you actually physically have that emotion to go, you won't do anything, you won't act. So this really ties into what I was saying about um, researching and really getting into the thing that you're trying to change. Because if you haven't quite evoked those emotive um, reactions within you, chances are you're not going to um, stick with it. And we see this all the time. Someone that's had, say, a heart attack or being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes suddenly kicks in the gear and then makes loads of lifestyle changes. There was absolutely no reason why they couldn't have done that in the years prior. In, we know about the risks of being overweight or being unhealthy or smoking or drinking too much, but almost the risk of it isn't enough until it actually happens and then that's the trigger. The emotions kick in and that's what drives the change. So try and make sure that whatever you're trying to do, there's an emotive reason behind it. And if you haven't got one, maybe try and create one to actually then latch onto that, which then ties in with the other points and helps you stay on track. And there you have it, guys. There are 10 tips for sticking with your New Year's resolution. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications if you wanna know when we publish more videos. Depending on when you're watching this, I hope you had a good new year. I suppose it doesn't matter when you watched it, I still hope you had a good new year. Um, we'll see you at the next video, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.